warning of minor spoilers for seasons one to three of Buffy and Angel. Let's get to work. So what is going on? Well, there's a fascinating minor character called Whistler who comes in at the end of season two of Buffy and provides a kind of added set of details about Angel. We know the basic story in terms of Angelus and Darla cursing Angel, but Whistler provides some additional information about why he showed up in Sunnydale the way he did, why were all these coincidences happening of Angel working with and meeting Buffy, and apparently it was all sort of predetermined. Whistler essentially encounters Angel while he's still struggling with getting his soul back and dealing with the guilt and remorse of being a vampire and with the memories. But Angel had not yet decided to become a hero, and Whistler basically points him in the direction of going to Sunnydale. Again, this is a complete retcon. It doesn't really exist in Season 1. If you pay attention closely, Angel does not really have any strong motivation. It just seems like a pure coincidental meeting between him and Buffy. But Season 2 changes that, that no, there was a larger story going on, and, and Whistler was a part of that. And of itself, this isn't too interesting. What is really shocking and very curious is when Angel the series begins, essentially we have a substitute for Whistler in the form of Doyle. And again, I want to be clear, I like Doyle, I have no problem with the character, but Doyle is essentially the substitute for Whistler and is a very different character, very different persona. They do have an overlap and being these kind of interesting outsider characters, but they are very different. And there is a reason for the difference namely the Marvel comic book universe. I don't mean the MCU, although the MCU is now tied to this. It is literally because of Marvel Comics that Whistler does not really exist in the Angelverse. He exists in a minor way in the Buffyverse, but he does not exist in the Angelverse because the creators, including Joss, were worried about legal issues. Whistler is essentially taken from Blade. Yes, Blade, the Black Vampire. If you know Blade, there is also Whistler, and the problem is, basically, this is an identical character. There are a few minor differences, but essentially, in the Blade mythology, Whistler is the same thing. Whistler essentially rescues Blade, trains him, and tries to force him to see his humanity, and forges him into a hero. Now, Whistler himself has changed a lot. Depending on the adaptation, he takes on different roles, but his mentor role always is consistent. And apparently the Buffy people were a little bit worried that their Whistler and the Marvel Comics Whistler were a little too close because basically they're the same character. So for Angel, they had to invent Doyle to basically be not infringing on copyright. Was this going to be a real threat or real problem? We'll never know. As far as I know, Marvel Comics made no effort to get after them for this legal issue. So it could have been they were over worried for nothing. Still... It was a legit worry because the characters are very, very close to being nearly identical. So they had to do something. So Doyle is not a mentor figure. He's more like a guide to Angel to these cosmic entities or larger dimensions within the Angelverse. So technically speaking, Whistler does not exist in the Angelverse. As far as I know, Angel never refers to him ever after season two of Buffy. So he's just basically not there. If you pay attention to Buffy, you'll realize, well, technically he exists, but again, in Buffy also, they really never talk about him, they never mention him. The story of season two and the ending is spoken of and explicitly referred to and what happened, but Whistler's role is sort of minimized that it basically almost never happened. And if you do pay attention to the actual episode, even though his role is critical in telling Buffy a few things and giving us a few more details and through the flashbacks, it's not completely necessary. You could technically edit him out. Again, Buffy just needs to know a few things. She could have gotten this information from other people, even Giles. So at the end of the day, Whistler is important within the official canon. But again, in terms of the larger story, he is an interesting but small detail in terms of the larger narrative. Unfortunately, it was due to legal reasons, basically. Capitalism. It really wasn't due to the story. Again, many characters are sort of forgotten. Probably one of the most interesting cases is Oz. Oz is given a kind of official farewell in Season 4, and that's about it. They don't ever return to him. He returns an angel, but within Buffy proper, 
they kind of just forget about him, which is pretty shocking and extraordinary given how much Oz was a close friend, but they just kind of forget about him. So this has happened before where critical characters are just kind of blended into the background and they just become a minor detail as the seasons progress. But Whistler's a very, very curious case because it is an homage to the Marvel comics. And if you know Buffy, there is a lot, and I do mean a lot, of the Marvel comics in the story. And again, to a certain point, that's fine. It's fine legally and creatively, but apparently Whistler was a little bit too much, so they had to pull it back. So it's interesting if you ever have the question, what happened to Whistler? Well, he was just a little too close to the original source material, and they had to find a way to get rid of him. So in terms of the comic books, he does return. There is more story with him. And if you're curious, you can seek those out. I don't know those comics, but I am curious to learn a little bit more about him. But in terms of the official television canon, he really only exists in a couple episodes of Buffy.